Hi guys, let's make some epoxy coasters today with two tools. These things are super easy and come out looking great. They take a few days of curing, but in terms of hours working, it's not much. So let's get started. I've got this old piece of pine fence post I literally pulled out of a dumpster at my local lumber yard, and I grabbed a coaster I already had to trace four onto it. If you want to follow along step by step, the diameter of the circles are three and three quarter inches. So why am I using cheap lumber? Honestly, I just really like the look of this pine. It has a deep reddish brown color when I added some oil, so I thought it'd have some good color contrast to the blue epoxy I'll add later. I'm using the Dremel 561 to start this project on a Dremel 4300. The reason I'm not using a flex shaft is because I want the river design to have a consistent depth, so I'm attaching the Dremel router attachment to my tool. I've got the depth set to about a third of an inch, and I'll be carving at just over 25,000 RPM. Since I'm using two hands as I'm routing, I clamp down the board. So as you can see, I've drawn on all four coasters onto the board with a little bit of space between, and I've drawn a river design going through all of them. There's a few reasons why I did it this way. The first reason is that if I carve out the whole river through all four and leave the wood on the edges of the board, I don't have to construct anything to hold the epoxy in when I pour it. So this means no tape, no molds, and most importantly, no leaks. The next reason is that the river design will be continuous, so you can pour the whole thing from one starting point. And as the mica powder that I'll be using for the coloring flows, it'll create some natural lines. And those streaks will go along the length of the river and not bunch up at the edges of the coasters. I'll explain that more later on once I've poured the epoxy. Another reason is that you can line up all the coasters once they're done for display, which is just more for aesthetics. And finally, you want to at least keep a quarter inch of space between the coasters so you can cut them out and sand them without cutting into the circle. Carving out the river was super easy on this pine since it was practically chipping out faster than I was carving it out. And I left the center line in the river alone so that the router had something to rest on. Getting a consistent depth makes everything so much easier and makes the final product look a lot more professional. I then went along carefully and cut out the center line. By the way, if you're going to make these coasters for yourself, Follow the user manual and safety instructions of your tool, and wear hearing protection, a mask, and safety glasses because you don't want to breathe in sawdust or epoxy or get it in your eyes. Look at all those chips. So we have a pretty smooth design. It goes all the way to the ends and doesn't go past the edge, but we need to clean up the edges of the river. I'll use a 60 grit sanding drum here at 15,000 RPM to do that. We also want the bottom smooth to ensure no splinters break off and float in the epoxy. So I'm sanding the base of the river with this 200 grit sanding wheel. I really focus too on flattening out right where the edges of the coasters would be, since that junction between the wood and the epoxy will be visible once we cut them out. So you don't want it looking unfinished. Now that the river is all carved out and sanded to my satisfaction, it's time for the epoxy. I'm using this brand I got from Amazon. I've used it before and it's pretty good with bubbles and cure time. You can also buy it in really small quantities. I'll also use a mix of these two mica-based pigments for the bottom layer, and then a mix of these two for the top layer of the epoxy. That might have raised a couple questions. Why use mica-based pigment instead of regular dye? Well, other than the sparkly factor that people like, because I didn't carve that deep into the wood, I'm using the mica so that you can't see through the epoxy. I don't want to be able to see the wood through the river. On the other hand though, I still want to see some depth in the epoxy, which is why I'm doing two layers. The first layer will be a darker blue, and also have a lot more pigment in it, so it stops you from being able to see through it. And then the second layer on top will be lighter, mimicking a natural river, but also have a lot less pigment, so that you can see through it and see the bottom layer of epoxy beneath it. Back to my earlier point about the flow of the mica powder. If you pour and do nothing, it'll have a bit of a blotchy look to it. But if you move it around in a linear fashion, especially when it's thick, it'll develop some lines of shiny mica that make it look like the river is flowing and not stagnant. I let the first layer set for a couple of hours until it was really viscous, and then poured the second layer on top until it was just over the lip of the wood. Make sure your piece is perfectly level here. A simple torch is really handy to pop any bubbles on the surface of the epoxy, 
So over the course of a few hours, I came back every now and then and popped any bubbles that I saw. Alright, here's the cured epoxy after a couple days. If you don't know, epoxy is a lot harder to sand than wood, or at least most woods. It's just terrible. You could absolutely flatten out this board with the Dremel sanding attachments, but I'm going to cheat and use this orbital sander. I know I usually just use a Dremel for my videos, but I invested in the sander since I don't like sanding and this wasn't that expensive. Another plus is that the sander's surface area makes it so much easier to keep the surface flat. I started at 80 grit and then went straight to 200 grit until there was no bump between the wood and the epoxy. Since I sanded away my outlines, I redrew them, and I once again left that gap so that I had room to cut between the coasters. Alright, simple stuff. We'll just use the 561 at 25,000 RPM to cut these out. Straight line through first, and okay. Great. That's what I get for working with low quality pine from a dumpster. I'll just super glue that later. I got nervous about breaking more or carving where I shouldn't. So for each one, I just slowly went around them with the Dremel 562 until they were all pretty roughly rounded. They looked pretty good other than the broken one. And I didn't want to get any closer with the 562 to avoid slipping with it and carving something I shouldn't. For a more controlled carving experience, I switched to the Dremel 801 bit to carve right up to that outline and get a nice flat edge on all the coasters. Now is when I ask that if you like this video and you think I deserve it, please subscribe to this channel to keep getting content like this. I don't really get any benefits for having subscribers, but I do like building this community of people interested in power carving. Thank you. Okay, back to the video. I cleaned up the rounding with 200 grit on the orbital sander for all the coasters after shaping them. They looked a little dull after shaping, uh, a little boring, a little plain. So I wanted a little bevel on the base. I used the 801 again for that, a simple 45 degree angle, taking away about a centimeter of material. All right, looking good, rough, but good. To fix the broken one, I just used a liberal amount of super glue and clamped it into place. I then went over all the coasters with 200 grit on the orbital sander, keeping the angle sharp rather than rounding off the bevel. That's just a style preference though. I think these look fantastic. They're uniform, but not too perfect, so you know they're handmade. Also, I took the bevel right up to the junction of the epoxy and the wood on all of them so that they're consistent. Because the highest grit I had for the sander was 200, I used a polishing wheel that's 400 grit to get a little extra shine on the coasters. I use these at 10,000 RPM since they're pretty fragile. Everything I use, by the way, I'll link in the description below. And here we are. The coasters are all sanded and smooth, uniform and pretty. If you're wondering, the bottoms are darker since I barely sanded them to keep that original oxidated color of the board. It might also just be UV, I'm not really sure. I thought it'd be a nice touch. I'm going to use this teak oil finish since it helps seal the wood and make it water resistant. And we need that since these will get a lot of water exposure. So this one is old and gross. So here's a new one. I put a hefty amount onto each and followed the instructions for my finish. This one's got some bad vapors, so I kept on a mask and wore gloves. I think the used paper towels are also a fire hazard, so I put them somewhere where they could dry out and not spontaneously combust and burn down my neighborhood. I had to wait three days for this to dry, and I was lucky enough to drop the broken coaster again, which was super cool. Nothing a little super glue won't fix again though. Use a good hardwood if you're doing this yourself so you don't keep breaking them. So these things look finished, but I wanted them waterproof so they last. I've got them set up here outside on some paper cups and I'm going to spray them with polyurethane. I hope you appreciate the socks and sandals. Once again, wear a mask and eye protection because you don't want airborne plastic in your eyes or lungs. I did a couple coats on the tops and the bottoms, letting them dry a couple hours in between each coat, and then let them dry a couple days. And here they are. Super glossy, super smooth. The polyurethane is really forgiving with the sanding, so even though I only went up to 400 grit, they still feel incredibly smooth. The only problem for these is that I let them dry outside, so some dust and pollen got stuck to the surface before the polyurethane had a chance to dry. I would have done it inside, but I don't have a workshop and I don't want to have all the fumes lingering around in the garage since my dog sleeps in there. Overall though, this is a really low effort project for the product, and I love making these.
you can totally customize them with different wood, different colored epoxy, different shapes, etc. I'm also really happy I took the bevel just up to the epoxy since that kept the bottom of the river cut out flat and even. I think this gives the finished coaster a lot more professional look than a big uneven groove full of epoxy. If you want more easy epoxy project ideas like this, stay tuned for an upcoming video where I make this magnetic mahogany and epoxy bottle opener. If you have any requests, comments, or questions, leave them down below. Please like and subscribe if you'd like. And that's all I have for now, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.